Hello again friends, it's Over the Red here. Today we're filming outside because it's a lovely day out here, but it is windy, so if we pick up some of that wind on the microphone, I'm sorry, I will try to edit that out best I can. Today's video is all about increasing your stitches when you're working on a null binding piece. In the last video, we looked at starting a null binding piece from the closed end of a garment and working our way out from there. This is a continuation of that video, so if you didn't see that one, feel free to go watch it and come back to this one a little bit later. For those of you who have watched it, what we're going to do now is increasing. So we're going to work our way... George! Stop it! George, who's that? Who's that? Say hello. Oh, got the plaits. In this video, what we're going to do is start increasing, which is a necessary component of graduating from your starting point to the width that you need for whatever garment you're working on. For example, if you're making a pair of socks, you'll use the closed end starting point and use increasing to widen your piece to the width of your foot. What you'll need for this video is the sample piece that we started last time and your needle and of course some extra yarn. Let's clarify some things for the new viewers. When I talk about old loops, I'm talking about the previous row of stitches you have done. When I talk about new loops, I'm talking about the stitches you've just previously made. When I say move the needle from front to back, I mean you're inserting from the side closest to you and pushing away from yourself. When I say insert the needle from back to front, I mean you're inserting the needle from the side of the fabric away from yourself and pushing the needle towards yourself. Remember, we're working in York Stitch, and if you haven't already learnt York Stitch, we do have a couple of videos on how to begin that. Whether you're carrying on from our previous video, or you're starting a different piece entirely, and you're up to the point in which you need to increase, what you need to do firstly is create one stitch of York Stitch. Now that you've made one stitch of York Stitch, insert your needle from front to back, like you would normally, Pull one stitch of York Stitch into the exact same two old loops that you did for the previous stitch. Then, as normal for York Stitch, move the needle from back to front into the two newest loops that you have made. Pull the needle through and tighten to size. Let's increase again. Move one stitch over and create a new York Stitch. Place your needle from front to back through the same two old loops that you did your previous stitch into. Then move your needle from back to front into the two newest loops you have made. That's the basics of increasing with null binding in York Stitch. By inserting your needle into the same loops that you did for the previous stitch you had just made, that is increasing the number of stitches in a given round. The practice is pretty universal for all the stitches that I've tried. You simply make your new stitch into the same old loops that you had made your previous stitch. Effectively, you're turning one old stitch into two new stitches. Depending on the piece you're working on, you may even insert a third stitch into the same old stitch. Uh, that creates a more dramatic increasing effect, but it is still important in certain applications. The most I have ever had to insert into a single stitch is four stitches, and that was a very severe uh, increase. But generally speaking, if you're making things like socks and mittens, you'll only ever need to increase one extra stitch. Uh, into an old stitch. It's important to note that if you increase too many stitches in a given round, your piece won't lay flat or it won't curve in the way you necessarily want it to, um, and instead what you'll get is a sort of a wave effect at the edge of your fabric. It means that you're increasing too much for the size of the round. 
Provided you haven't increased extensively, like for a number of rows, uh, you should be able to mitigate this by not increasing as heavily as you think you should into the next round. It sort of evens it out a little bit. How many stitches to increase into a round is very subjective and it will depend on the stitch you're doing and the gauge of your needle or whether or not you work on the thumb or off the thumb. Similarly, if you're not increasing fast enough, your piece won't reach the width that it needs to be at the point that it needs to be. And while most stitches are fairly forgiving, that there's a little bit of stretch to them so that they will sort of uh, move themselves around whatever object they're supposed to fit. Uh, for, you, for socks, for example, they will stretch in a certain way around the features of your foot. Um, it will mean that you might have mismatched socks if you don't consistently uh, increase over the, the same space over both socks. One thing you can do to mark where your rounds start is to put a safety pin into the stitch where your round has joined or in the case of where you're starting from the close end where you've started to go from that initial first round into the second round. You put a safety pin there and it's a rough guide as to where your rounds start. It's not going to be perfectly right because each stitch you make is a little bit offset from the last one. Putting a safety pin in that spot is a good marker to know how many rounds you've done and whether or not you need to increase more or increase less in your next round. So I hope this has been helpful for those of you who've been struggling with increasing thus far. If there's other videos you'd like to see me make, please leave a comment down below in the comment section and I will add it to my to-do list. The next video will be on decreasing your stitches using York Stitch. If you've enjoyed this video and found it useful and you'd like to see more, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell to be alerted when we put out new videos. That's all we have for today though. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Oh, it got very bright very quickly. It was lovely and overcast. But the sun has come out to scorn me.